stop. <coughs> Can you please tell me where I am? You're at King Pan's stables. Oh, what luck. I understand that there's a stable boy who stays here alone with me. That must be a supper that we're taking to him. Why do you want to know? I have some business I need to attend to. Please move along, sir. You are not welcome here. You won't believe what just happened to me. This man came up to me and... Good evening. <coughs> what? What business do you have here? It's business can put something in your pocket. You're one of them touts. I'll show you how we serve them in King's Pyland. I'm afraid, Watson, that we shall be leaving this morning. What? Where to? To King's Pyland. There's been a disappearance of the favorite for the Wessex Cup, and also the tragic death of its trainer. I shall pack my bags, then. Sherlock, do you mind filling me in on the details of this case? Of course not, my good friend. You see, yesterday morning, when the servants of King's Pyland awoke, they found the stable boy, Ned Hunters, had been drugged and that the horse, the Silver Blaze, was missing. Then a short time later, they found the dead body of the horse's trainer, Mr. Strack. What was the cause of death? He had two wounds, a blow to the head and a long gash in his leg. He was also holding a knife in his right hand, and in his left hand, a red cloth. A red cloth? Yes. It appears it belongs to a man... Fitzroy Simpson, which the maid and the stable boy had seen the previous night. Did Mr. Simpson confirm the cloth was his? Yes, he also confirmed that he had been at King's Pyland that night, but he claims he knows nothing about the disappearance of the horse or the death of the trainer. So where will we start first? To interrogate Mr. Simpson? No, Inspector Gregory will meet us at the train station and take us out to King's Pyland stable, while the scene of the crime is still somewhat fresh. Do you think you can find the horse in time for the race? I don't know, Watson. I don't know. Ah, there he is! Inspector Gregory! True law. Thank you so much for coming. Have there been any new developments? I'm sorry to say, but we've made very little progress in the case. We have the carriage outside waiting for you, just like you asked. Good. Come, Watson. The game's afoot. Would you like to go to the scene of the crime now, Mr. Holmes? I think I would like to stay here and go into one or two questions of detail. Striker was brought back here, I presume. Yes, sir. He's just upstairs. And I presume you made an inventory of what he had in his pockets at the time of death? I have the things themselves in the sitting room. Would you like to see them? I should be very glad. I presume this is the knife that was found in the dead man's grasp? Watson, this knife is surely within your line? Yes, this is what we call a cataract knife. It's a blade made for very delicate work. Strange for a man to be carrying it with him since it won't fold up in his pocket. But how about these papers? There are three bills and a letter for a William Derbyshire of Bourne Street. Well, well. Someone has somewhat of an expensive taste. However, we have nothing more to learn here. May we now go to the scene of the crime? Have you got them? Have you found them? Not yet, Miss Stracker. But Mr. Holmes is here from London to help us. Surely I've met you before. In, uh, in Plymouth? At the garden party? 
No, sir. You're mistaken. I could have sworn to it. You wore the costume of the dove-colored silk with the ostrich feather trimming. I've never owned such a dress. Ah, well, that settles it then. My deepest apologies, madam. Was it raining the night of the murder? Yes, sir. A very heavy rain. Are there any tracks? I'm afraid not, sir. I've carefully examined the ground for a hundred yards in every direction. Very good. I'd like to take a walk, though, around the moor before dark, so that I may know my ground better tomorrow. Good idea, Holmes. I hope you two don't mind doing it alone, because I'll have to go back to the station for a little while. Quite all right, Inspector. Watson, we may forget the question of who killed Mr. Stracker for the moment, and confine ourselves into finding what happened to the horse. Now, if the horse got loose during or after the tragedy, where would he go? He would either return to King's Pyland or go over to Mapleton. Exactly, Watson. And since he didn't return to King's Pyland, he must have gone over to Mapleton. Ah, there, Watson. Do you see it? It's the tracks of a horse. Indeed, Watson. Now quickly, follow them. Look, Watson, there. A man's footprints beside the horse. The horse was alone before, was he not? Quite so. Hello. What's this? It looks like the tracks head back to King's Pilot. Indeed, Watson. Yes, indeed. Sherlock, look. The tracks have headed back this way. Good eye, Watson. Hey, what's this? What the devil do you want here? I only wish to ask you a question, sir. Uh, I, I've got no time for you. Be off now, or you may find a dog at your heels. That's a lie! Very good, then. Shall we argue about this here, in front of my friend, or go inside to the parlor? Oh, you may come inside if you wish. Thank you. Watson, I shall not be more than a few minutes. What you have instructed shall be done. There must be no mistake. Oh, no, there will be no mistake. It will be there. Uh, should I change him first, or not? No, I think not. No tricks now, or... Oh, uh, you can trust me, Mr. Holmes. Yes, I think I can. You will hear from me tomorrow. He has the horse there? Yes. He tried to deny it, but once I described to him what had happened on that morning, he confessed. What did happen, Holmes? You see, Watson, Mr. Brown was out for an early morning stroll when he saw the silver blaze and went to take him back to King's Pilot. But then, the devil showed him a different path, for the silver blaze is the only horse which could beat the one he had placed his mind on. He then took the horses back to his stables and painted it so the horse didn't look like itself. But are you not afraid to leave Silver Blaze with him? He has every reason to harm the horse. Yes, however, he knows the only hope of being shown any mercy is to produce that horse safely. Uh. Now, see here, Watson, I want to have a little fun with the inspector. So, when we get back, say nothing about the horse to him. All right, Holmes. So now we need to find out who killed Mr. Stracker. On the contrary, we will go back to London by train tonight. What? So, Sherlock, what's next in the case? My friend and I will be returning to London by the Nightly Express. What? 
Do you despair of the arresting of the murder of poor Stracker? There are certainly grave difficulties in the way. However, I am sure the horse will race this weekend. Can I trouble you for a picture of Mr. Stracker? Here you are. But I must say, I'm very disappointed in you, Holmes. From what I see, we are no further along in the case than when you came. At least you have his assurance that the horse will run. Yes, I have his assurance, but I would rather have the horse. Excuse me, sirs. Your carriage is here. Thank you. You have sheep here at King's Pyland, do you not? Yes, sir. Have you noticed anything amiss about them lately? Not much, sir, but three of them went lame within the past week. So how's the betting? What? Oh, there you are, Mr. Holmes. Where is the Silver Blaze? I've seen nothing of him yet. I suppose you know him when you see him. He is the only white horse that's supposed to be in the race. I think I would recognize him. Look, all six horses are here. So the Silver Blaze is running? But I don't see him. There, the jockey with the red coat and the red hat. That's not the Silver Blaze. That beast has not a white hair on him. Well, well, let's see how he gets on. He's won! The Silver Blaze has won! Don't you think you've kept up the mystery long enough? Certainly, Inspector. You shall know everything. But first, let us take a look at the horse. Alright then, follow me. Ah, there he is. You only have to wash him in the spirits of wine and you will see he's the same Silver Blaze as ever. You take my breath away. I found him in the hands of Mr. Brown and took the liberty of running him just the way he was sent over. My dear sir, you have done wonders, and I owe you an apology for doubting your ability. However, I would still love to get my hands on the murder of John Stracker. I have done that also. You've got him. Where is he then? He is here. Here? Where? He's in my company at the moment. What? Our regard for what you have just said is either a bad joke or an insult. I assure you, I'm not associating you with the crime, Inspector. The real murderer is standing behind you. Do you mean the horse? Yes, the horse. And it may lessen his guilt if I say it was done in self-defense, and that Mr. Stracker is a man unworthy of your trust. What? Why do you say that? I came here believing that Fitzroy Simpson was indeed the murderer. And I confess the evidence against him was not complete. Then, while we were in the carriage, it hit me. The dog was not drugged, yet after Mr. Simpson left, it didn't make another sound. Which means the person who took the horse must have been someone the dog knew. Exactly. I assume it was Mr. Stracker who went down to the stables in the dead of night to injure the horse. For why else would he be carrying a non-retractable blade in use of detailed work? That's why you asked the maid about the sheep. Right. He had practiced making the sheep go lame by small slits in the back of their leg. That's how he knew he could do it on the horse. But why would he want to hurt his own horse? As a man of this world, Inspector, you know that men do not carry other people's bills around in their pocket. Therefore, Mr. Stracker was leading a double life. The nature of the bill showed he had purchased a dress for a lady of expensive taste. But when I questioned Mrs. Stracker about it, she knew nothing of the dress. I then took the photo of Mr. Stracker to the place of business from which the bill had come. They had once recognized him as Mr. Derbyshire. 
From then on, it was clear Mr. Stracker had bet against his horse, for he was in a great bit of debt. The horse got spooked, kicked him in the head, and then took off with them all. Remarkable. Simply remarkable. Now that you have no further need of me, I shall return home, so that I may start on my next case. Thank you.